Welcome to another episode of How, How You Been, been? Mamrie and I's limited series sponsored by DoorDash. If you don't know about DoorDash, you should know. It's the quick app to get quick food delivered quickly to your door. <laughs> you can get all your local favorites. You can even get groceries and convenience store items. I mean, did you know that you could get Cheetos delivered immediately? Oh, well, now my life is forever screwed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you know what? We have such a delightful full treat coming uh, straight delivered to your ear holes today yeah we are catching up with our dear old friend she's not old we just have known each other a long time yes francesca ramsey uh, who i mean iconically busy always busy she, always doing the coolest thing unexpectedly but also well deservedly uh, yes she really made 2020 her bitch yes. and i can't wait to catch up with her so let's ask cheska how, how you been, been? I've been what I've been calling a <laughs> pandemic fine. I'm healthy. Oh, yes. I'm housed. Yes. I'm employed, but there's still a pandemic. So <laughs> well, and you are you are with dog, which is I am with dog. <laughs> yeah, which I think is a pandemic bonus and a necessity for everyone and, at this point. An entire subject matter that we are going to go into at oh, length. But let me I'm say. Ready. <laughs> Francesca, I don't think you're doing pandemic fine. Uh uh-uh. uh. I feel like you have been making it look pandemic foin. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As they used to say, because you are thriving in your <laughs> Los Angeles existence. Truly. I mean, you're. Oh my a, God. Yeah, you Thank are a person you. that is always working and is always like working to work. You know, like you are setting yourself up for your goals and achieving them. And uh-huh. it is so cool to see and you have so many like cool things going on i know right i now. feel overwhelmed <laughs> i know i feel overwhelmed <laughs> oh, <laughs> we were that, going that's over so nice coming from you guys because you guys work really hard too and you're always juggling a bajillion things so i'm very flattered well okay let's get into the yeah. the newest biggest thing that uh at least you might have secret other projects going on but that i've <laughs> seen you announce that you're a writer and producer on the new iCarly re- reboot yeah at pa- paramount plus you know sign up get your get your free trial <laughs> yeah um <laughs> yeah it's been we went into production this week um oh, and it's really wow. you know it's interesting with the pandemic like we're all watching a monitor from home uh, which is kind of a wow. bummer, but it's cool. Like the the quality is really great, and we can see it's a multicam, so we can see all the camera angles from home and give Whoa. notes and pitch jokes, and uh, it's really fun. It's been so exciting. I'm learning so much. Well, it's an iconic show. I do want to know because you know. How do you know it's an iconic show? <laughs> Because it starts with an I, and so I, Carly, being iconic, just made sense in my I, brain. Well, I know, I know that there is there is such like uh, fandom behind. Be the careful, show. be careful, because right? they will come okay. for you. These That's, are our questions. That, These are our questions. Those are my questions because I feel I'm 35, and I feel like I just missed the I, Carly, like. Phenomenon. Oh yeah, I totally missed it. I'm I'm 37, so I was yeah, graduating. Same. I was graduating college when iCarly premiered. So I knew oh. the show. <laughs> right. And I watched it in preparation for my job interview, but I right. was not like the target audience. And I just like, you know, dropped a casual tweet like, oh yeah, someone you know is working on this. And my mentions were like, is Freddie still dating Sam? And is this happening? I was like, oh my God. Like I stepped in it. I, every day I'm tagged really? in like iCarly memes on Instagram. Really? And I'm like, oh my God, this is, well, it's really intense. Oh, I'm trying to think of, you know, because I'm 37 as well. When we were of that age and yeah. what our like be all end all universe show we used to watch. If that was coming back like 15 years yeah. later. Yeah. That would be an intense responsibility. It's, you know, it's funny because I don't know that I ever, I'm not like a fanatical person. Like I yeah. won't, like if you say you don't like a musician I like, I'm not going to stab you. And some people will. Like there yeah, are people right. who that's their whole vibe. They're like, yeah. I will kill your whole family. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is, yeah, my is identity <laughs> is my love for this person. And now you are breaking me down in a way yeah. I'm uncomfortable with. <laughs> and like no shade. Like if that's your vibe, awesome. But I'm not like that about anything. So. I can't imagine a a show being rebooted and I would be excited, but I don't know. I, I, yeah, it's just like generational. Like this makes me feel and sound so old. Like I just, I'm like memes, gifts, like what? I can't do it. (laughs) 
<laughs> Someone no, else make them and I'll share them. But like, I ain't got time for that. Like, no, I hear well, you. Like okay. even back in the day, because yeah. in the YouTube of it all and doing conventions and stuff, I remember Grace and I would be like, I don't know if there's a person I would cry upon meeting. Yeah. No, no, I can't yeah. think of anyone I would cry for. Like, no, I think I would be nervous, but I'm right. just in general nervous to meet. I'm nervous to check you're, out you're at postman. CVS. Yeah. Like I, uh, so yeah, I just I spent a lot of time trying to get the two cat eyes to match. Like I'm not about <laughs> to fuck that up for anybody. I'm Thank sorry. You. Like I'm not gonna cry. Well, okay. Then I have a question about when you go into your interview for a job like this. Do you spend hours like rewatching the show, like learning it inside and out, like going online? Like how do you approach an interview for a job like that? Um, I watched, so they sent us like a link to watch a number of episodes because at the time it wasn't on any streaming services. Oh, wow. it, okay. ju- it just got on to Netflix, um, maybe like a month ago. Okay. Um, and I did not have what's now Paramount Plus, which was CBS All Access Digital. There are some episodes there, but I didn't have it. So they sent over like six episodes and I watched them. Um, and then I just tried to like write jokes and like pitch ideas for stories based yeah. on those episodes and then kind of what they decided the new iteration of the show is going to be about like mm. Carly in her 20s and kind of like dating and career and for me I was excited because I had you know the connection of oh I started on YouTube I yeah. know what it's like to be in your 20s and be like what should I be doing should I mm-hmm. still do YouTube should I do other things like how do I explain my career to normal people that aren't on the internet like yeah. all that stuff really spoke to me um so that's kind of what I pitched jokes on and just kind of talked about some of the ridiculous things that happened to me while I was making YouTube content and how I felt like that could inspire stories for the show um but I think you know if you're if you're if you are interviewing for a job no matter what it is you want to do your research but you also Uh just want to bring your authentic voice to it totally Totally. but then you got to drop those little like little wonders that you're like I watched it I watched it (laughs) I'm like so is anyone else you're interviewing actually made money from the internet just (laughs) curious seriously I mean that's so great that you have the experience because I remember like back in the day when people were finally like hey the internet's a thing we should completely bastardize it and make money off of it I remember us going to like interview for shows and like they're just like we just want to pick your brain but not actually hire you oh you know yeah, and i feel yeah. like you've made that transition beautifully i mean of course like decoded which is i mean award-winning and incredible and then you wrote on comedy central Thank for so you. long like yeah. how has it been keeping the relationship or feeling the pressure of like remaining relevant as yourself online oh. versus just going behind the curtain you know? Yeah, that's a really great question and something I'm truly grappling with all the time. I'm very much in this like weird space of I love the internet. It's been super good to me. It's opened so many doors for me, but I'm sure you guys have these feelings too. Like I often hate the internet. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. I'm very like I often. hate that I have to like stay engaged. I hate that I have to know what's going mm-hmm. on. I yeah. hate that I have to like think strategically and I can't just like post a stupid picture and just like forget about like set yeah. it and forget it. Yes. Um Rob Peel. <laughs> Rest in I'm peace. I'm like will this will this work? Like will my fans mm-hmm. like I hate that uh, stuff. Yeah. Um and so I'm like very much I feel like my TV writing career is my attempt to get to a place where I don't have to think about that anymore. Um, So I'm still trying to navigate what that looks like. Like, how do I have a private personal life, but still Mm -hmm. be a public quote unquote person? I don't really know. And I'm truly kind of at a place where I'm like, do I even want to be a public person anymore? I don't know. Like, I don't, I like my privacy. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Like, my dream is someday I'll be able to maybe hire someone to manage my social media and I won't have to think about it anymore. Oh, that, absolutely. We that'd just be great. Uh, we did a podcast with Louise Pentland, who is a British. We know her from OG YouTube. Yeah. And she was yeah. like, she was like, let me take a picture for my um like new hire to she says pulse out she was like (gasps) she creates little things and I'm like oh right you can get someone who knows what they're doing I feel like since we were at like the beginning of 
not vlogging, but like editing and things like that. You're like, oh, I need to learn this new thing. There's only you so have much to do room. everything. It, everything. It was like it was like inauthentic if you right. hired people to edit mm-hmm. for you or right. you know you upgraded your camera and everyone would be like, you've changed. You're <laughs> not <laughs> using a <laughs> shitty web camera anymore. And it's like what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're horny you, for lo-fi. Yeah, Seriously. you filter a picture one time and they're like, what are you trying to do? Yeah, what are you hiding behind? What and is this? Yeah. Uh, Four K shit. Yeah, <laughs> it's the endless hamster wheel. I'm so with you that I get so frustrated with the internet, and I constantly think like, what if I just turn it all off and I don't need any of it anymore? But then at the yeah. same time, what if I get on a schedule and I get it regulated for myself? Uh, the thing that I think is really cool about you is that I saw on your Instagram that you tend to post like your monthly plans for things. Mm-hmm. You love this personal, professional, like spiritual, all of it. And I think that's so cool. Is there like, did you consciously start doing this like for accountability? Was this just something that you're like, mm-hmm. I want to share just a little bit of my personal world with people? Yeah. Uh, so I've kept a journal since the third grade. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I like, I have all of them and like, they're Mm -hmm. these really cool time capsules and like through my process, I realized that writing down what I was working towards just Mm -hmm. really helped me just being able to look at it consistently. And, and even if I go back and find a journal from years ago, I'll see a list of things and I'm like, damn, I've done like everything on this list. And I hadn't even really thought about it. And so I started just like posting things on my Instagram stories and my followers were like, please post this on your main. Mm-hmm. I want to I like keep this. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, people share their version of their like little habit tracker is, is what it's called. And I make one every month and I um, just try to set goals for myself. And it's just nice um, in terms of accountability, but also it feels low pressure. It's not like I yeah. must do this. If I do it, great. If I don't, and then at the end of the month, I can look back and say like, oh, wow, like I did read a lot this month or I did work out a lot this month. Um, And just like, especially going through the pandemic, I like having something concrete that Mm -hmm. I can actually accomplish at a time when there's so much I can't control in my life and the world. (laughs) Oh, absolutely. I'm such a list maker. And you know, when we're like in the thick of it, it'll be like, I need to finish this script. I need to do this. I need to, all these big moves. And then like mid pandemic, it was like, Buy carrots. Yes. <laughs> and, and that was a what? journey. I'm all like, honestly, I'm very much of the mind that like set goals or intentions for things that you can control. I think yeah. mm-hmm. you're setting yourself for, up for failure if you, you know, say something that's beyond your control. Like, you know, I'm going to get a million subscribers yeah. or I'm going to mm-hmm. go viral or whatever it is. It's like you can't control that. But if you say I'm going to post this many times a month or yeah. I'm going to challenge myself to finish a script or take a class, like then at least, you know, you can control that. Totally. I say yeah. there's always a difference. Like I always have a to do list and a goals list, mm-hmm. you know, because those are very different things. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, my goal is to sell this book, but my to do list is to get the proposal done like yeah. there's no yeah. skipping those steps which leads us that. to wasn't that on oh yeah you have your... book proposal on your tracker <laughs> and so um and then I was like taking that off next month <laughs> I know then you're like shit well, now I'm in a writer's room I know well <laughs> I know are you working on a book or I assume we know we are. have well that escalated quickly yeah your first yeah book. yeah um so I've been like working on like a guided journal uh, so it's yes. like, it's like, a, it's, yes. it's like kind of like a book. Um, so my I've already under- pre-ordered it. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. yes. I need it. My undergrad degree is in graphic design. So I've always cool. been like really crafty and arty. Um, and so, yeah, I've like just wanted to do something that felt really tactile, but also could hopefully inspire people and kind of just merge all of my talents. And so it's got some like personal writing stuff, but it's more like designed prompts and things like that. So I'd started working on that before I got Carly. And then I was just like, I, I was doing Carly and Superstore at the same Uh time. And I was just like, so tired. (laughs) The last thing I wanted to do was write when I got home or draw or do anything. Um, yeah. So I was just like, you know what? There's no time limit on that. I'll work on it when I'm done with this. So, books aren't going yeah. anywhere. But I yeah. selfishly want you to do it because anywhere. I just want to. <laughs> Especially like prompt journals, design journals, like things that people need in their lives to give them structure, accountability, goal setting. Yeah, and that look cute too. I know it makes so much yeah. sense that you're 
your undergrad was graphic design. I don't think I've either known that or I didn't retain it. But like you yeah. to me have such an aesthetic that is mm-hmm. that just peaks like all my favorite little senses i love it oh my it. god same i swear i'm always like sliding into your dms like where's that jumpsuit from <laughs> where is that <laughs> no truly like you know me and you were friends irl yeah. and i was like i was like counting them and i was like fran look yes you do need to move to la so we can <laughs> trade know. clothes so we can just like do clothing swaps yes. and feel like we have new items yes. oh my god we went to coffee and you just showed up like so la with like a hat and like a little <laughs> book bag and like this little like um corduroy jumpsuit i was like okay come through fall in los angeles i, I was like a, i want this whole tiny outfit dog. Uh, oh my god truly i love i love your aesthetic so much um yeah. and i was just <laughs> laughing uh, before we got on because i was like i remember speaking of the way you act, like present yourself like physically mm-hmm. when you and i were getting i thought was going to be a drink in new oh, york yeah, a couple of years ago and you were getting your body toit to be <laughs> like was it health magazine it was, women, Self- it was women's i, I posed yes. nude in women's nude. health who like you know just Isn't just cash bad? she was like working out every morning like not not eating (laughs) sugar it was nuts that's incredible and so intimidating to even oh i mean listen i don't listen i have the evidence that i looked like that i do not look like that now i will say i'm trying to get back in shape the only thing i'm trying to keep are these quarantine titties i have never had i never was a busty chick and now i gotta i'm packing a little bit and i was like let me keep this can i keep the tits. yes so <laughs> like titties is incredible you know what like just feel free to use that like put it into the lexicon if oh, it girl. becomes a thing i'll know it was me and i will feel very proud of it oh take so many just is- corn titties up photos oh <laughs> when i you tell off. you the amount of nudes not sending them to anyone but i have a whole i have a whole collection Amazing. i'm giving you lighting i'm giving you props <laughs> You know what I mean? I was like, let me let me like get artsy up in here, flex that design degree. Oh, no. Wait, wait a second. What is the most like? Uh, wait, yeah, like, okay. Props cost, like, how far okay. have you gone what's as far the, as producing what's the a nude? Yeah, the awkwardest. Okay, so let pose. me tell you. Let me tell you. This is my like belated <laughs> hoe phase because yes. I was I was married. I was in a long term relationship. I, my whole twenties, I was in a relationship. Yeah. I got out. I was like, we gonna like hoe it up, and then yes. the pandemic happened. And I was like, cool, cool. I guess <laughs> that's not gonna happen. So I'm alone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. who's gonna see this? body so i like you know let me like just tap into my power my femininity yeah in my living room i have like these blinds and there's like this like really cool um moody noir uh, shadowy yeah. noir nice. type thing and i was like nice. oh this is great just give you like a silhouette of a tit with like yeah. you know <laughs> shades on it it's really yeah. great like so i have to wait till like the end of the day so like it's evening so that like my neighbors don't see yeah. but yeah. 30 so, seconds like, 30 seconds to catch it it's like it's just like, like america's like, next top model you're like i got 10 shots i got 10 shots that's it oh my god yes that is exactly it's like the magic hour i'm like let me uh, get it and go um so those are really fun um i'm trying to think what else i have a lot of wigs i don't i cut all my hair off so i don't have any hair anymore but like i used to love just like long hair cascading like giving you mermaid mermaid vibes Mm -hmm. don't have that anymore so i have dipped into the wigs love it you know just giving you or Uh, you know the uh the the peripheral you yeah uh, the proverbial you excuse me like just sensuality different <laughs> vibes yes, uh, different elements I, great i just imagine flex in the background being like what the fuck is going like, on oh no she put on that wig i know no. that wig's personality oh my god well i got him during the pandemic and i feel like our situation has been a lot of him like do you work do you have friends like yes. why don't you go anywhere <laughs> like you don't know me i used to be very cool before the pandemic and he's like you're here all the time and now you're naked laying around taking photos of yourself for no one what are you doing <laughs> do like, i need to call someone do i need to tell someone to check in on you i just have to admit this to you that i was in palm springs like i don't know a month and a half ago super cool house i'm staying at and i was with my friend jacqueline 
Dylan and I was like, just FYI, when we hit like the martini, when we hit like golden hour, I'm going to take a naked photo like in this room for my boyfriend. Yes. And I like set up, she had like a tripod. I set it up and I'm like, okay, let me, don't look over here. I'm going to take like a, just an ass pic. My butt was so white that the camera wouldn't focus. Oh! And, and she had to come in and take it for me. I was like, I just took 10 pictures and there's no butt crack. There's no butt crack visible because I'm a bounce light. Oh I'm a my human bounce. God. <laughs> wow. You know Jeez. what? I feel I feel like this is like the price of your privilege. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Like it's just the butt crack disappears. Like yeah. this is your struggle. No <laughs> complaints. You. Hey, you know what? I'll, I'll take it. No, no butt crack. In exchange for that vacation, I'll take it. Oh my god! I, I, my inspiration though was like seeing older pictures of myself in my twenties mm. and realizing like, oh, I talked so bad to myself about my body and my looks, and I yes. looked yes. so hot. And I and I like find a random picture and I'm like, I don't remember being this hot. Yeah. I hope that this doesn't happen to me when I get into like my fifties and sixties. Yes. And I'm like, oh my god, I was so hot in my thirties, and I didn't actually celebrate it. And so I'm like, damn it, I'm alone. Yeah. I'm I'm feeling good. I'm I gonna love do it. it. I Absolutely. think that's so inspirational. I have some work to do this afternoon. It turns yes! out, um, Grace will be like, also, I took a picture of my thumb. ankle. We've made. <laughs> yeah. uh, I shaved my shin, and uh, it was very titillating. I was oh going to ask God. you guys about pandemic hobbies, but it seems like you guys have been staying very busy. <laughs> Ugh. Do you ever get home from a big old journey to the grocery store, gonna cook an amazing meal and realize you forgot the one ingredient that you need to finish it? Ah, well no worries because now DoorDash can bring those ingredients straight to you from the store. That's right, it's not just delivery from your favorite restaurants, chains, and local favorites. You can also get snacks, drinks, and household essentials in 30 minutes with DoorDash. DoorDash connects you with the restaurants you love right now, right to your door. Ordering's easy, you open the DoorDash app App, choose what you want from where you want and your items will be left safely outside your door with contactless delivery drop off settings they've got over 300,000 partners in the US Puerto Rico Canada and Australia and you can support your neighborhood go to's or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeye's Chipotle and maybe Cheesecake Factory which I'm not even gonna lie I ordered a couple days ago from DoorDash and it was like I was being reunited with an old friend I hadn't seen in a year so for a limited time our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code HHYB. That's 25% off up to a $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code HHYB. Do not forget that's code HHYB for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms do apply. I, wait, I did see that you just got a cast iron skillet, which is oh, big news. I did. Okay, I've been has, cooking a lot. I yeah. know. I love to watch. Oh, you know, you're a, yeah, yeah, cooking you're is my great, porn. Yes, you are a great cook. Um, yeah, it's been really fun. I also got an air fryer, which I think everybody <gasps> has one. But I That's, love yeah. it, and especially because I'm trying to eat healthier, it's really great. Um, yeah, and I I grew up with a mom that didn't cook, so same I like, same here. So I'm like teaching myself yep, yes. this stuff. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a belated introduction to cooking, but mm-hmm. it's really really fun. It's awesome. It's you just follow instructions. Who knew? I didn't <laughs> yeah. know it was that easy. Yeah. Right. So that recipes are a different word for instructions. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, I it, know, but it feels so overwhelming to think about mm-hmm. like all the ingredients and all the different steps. And if you're trying to make multiple things at once, like yeah. all of that is really time stressful, management. But it's not that bad. I'm getting better at it. Yeah, because also you go, well, if I fuck this up, I took the time to figure out what I wanted to go buy it and to make it as opposed to if a kitchen fucks something up right. when you're in a restaurant, you're like, can I have a new one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's super expensive. And at least if I fuck it up, I can try it again. Like I still have extra ingredients left over totally okay you moved like we yeah. mentioned before you moved from new york and you were there what 11 years 12 11 years, years wow. 11 new york. years yeah. to los oh, angeles yeah and i remember so, when you were dropping the breadcrumbs of like i'm yeah. thinking about it i know yeah. i know <laughs> what was the like 
the thing that made it happen? Because I feel like you've been back and forth in Los Angeles I've working been, on different things. Yeah. Yeah. That was the big thing. I mean, so in 2019, I was here six months out of the year and then in 2020 I was here six months out of the year and I was just like this is a lot like I'm like flying back and forth and you guys know when you're working on development they don't pay they're not paying for flights they're not paying for Airbnbs (laughs) no they're not paying for you to rent a car and I was just spending so much money um and then especially with the pandemic I was just like I feel like this is going to last another year. And when it comes to quality of life, I would rather be in the sun. Yeah. And like for what I was paying in New York, I'm living like a motherfucking real housewife out here. Like I (laughs) am like, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I am just like living my best life. I truly had. And you guys know you lived in New York. I had true Stockholm syndrome. I got here Mm -hmm. and I was like, why was I? living like this oh, for so long <laughs> i yeah i mean i've been living in los angeles now for almost 10 years almost and i still we met right before you were moving i right. was like hey nice to meet you and you're like bye i'm moving tomorrow and <laughs> I, was I was like, like okay <laughs> finally a person in new york that's also doing youtube there's no one else here to talk about that's it okay you i'm moving. leaving Goodbye. yeah you guys moved exactly like right when i met both mm-hmm. of you, you i moving. know and it's uh still out here though i will have like moments where I remember what it was like living in New York and I go how did we do like how oh, did I actually see, do that I feel every like day? I'll go back to New York because I still have a couple friends there yeah. um I'll go back and when it's like the the trash day I <laughs> truly I truly am like oh New York Manhattan is a fucking hoarder yeah oh yeah like, I feel like no. I just walked into a hoarder's ho- home yeah yeah I know it's really like and there's just so much stuff that you just get conditioned like you mm-hmm. know you live in a in a metropolitan city like you're gonna have mice and yeah. roaches and you know I was in my kitchen and I was like oh my god it's a roach and I'm like oh it's a chia seed I'm in LA what the <laughs> fuck? there's no roaches here <laughs> I was like what I just I was just so used yeah. to and in, in New York I had a mouse I swear oh to god, god I had a mouse for two years it was basically my roommate it was like hey can I I get the Netflix password. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> My landlord did nothing about it. I was just like so used to dealing with this yeah. mouse. And then I moved to LA and I'm like, hey, the smoke alarm's going off. They come immediately and fix it. Wow. They ask, they send me like an email survey, like, how did we do fixing the smoke alarm? I was like, this is wild. They're like, here's I could an not... edible arrangement for your troubles. Oh my <laughs> God. It was wild. They were like, all we want to do is serve and satisfy you. I was wow. like, this is amazing. Um, And in New York, it was just like, I was so lucky if I could, like, you know, to be loud music, it would be my super. My super would be having a party. Right, right. (laughs) He was like an aspiring DJ. And I was just like, can you please turn it down? (laughs) Yeah, I feel like my New York existence was like my apartment crumbling around me while going, don't bring this to their attention or they'll realize they need to charge you more. Oh, my God. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, my God. Constantly like, you should be so lucky to live in this city. So deal with whatever is happening happening around you I remember like peak YouTube career for me where I was doing pretty good I was on a little schedule I had bed bugs and so I had to like corner off a corner of my apartment that was like clean and then the rest of my apartment was like bags of everything with bed bugs and I was like hey guys welcome back to my channel (laughs) (laughs) and I was like make sure you hit that subscribe button like I was just like doing the whole thing and then when the the camera went off I was just like sobbing because Uh, like I I was just like oh my god there are bed bugs everywhere and I just uh, oh it was a nightmare humble uh it's a humble well okay (laughs) I'm interested because like I feel like you went through a a YouTube thing, but you've also like, you know, grown your brand and your your job and opportunities outside of YouTube. What's your relationship like with social media now? Like, do you still post on YouTube? Do you watch YouTube? Like what for you? To me, it's like very, very different than it was, you know, years ago. And it's incredibly intimidating to be involved with the way that like I feel like I used to be. So I'm curious like what your point of view is on that. 
Yeah, I mean, I feel like I lucked out in the sense that YouTube was never my main source of income. It was frustrating for me where I was like, I'm working so hard and like this isn't working out for me and I don't know why. But I feel like in some ways it worked to my advantage because it taught me to always have multiple things going and like Mm -hmm. not have all my eggs in one basket. Totally. So YouTube opened a lot of doors for me, but it was never like a consistent thing for me. So I have not posted on YouTube. I'm going to say it's been like five or six years that's wow. amazing I'm like uh, I like feel like I just it's so like, nice to hear there's I'm something like the so girl nice about in that. the cult who like saw her leave and yeah. was like <laughs> She really did it. I oh, my God. I know. This is I, like Midsommar. We're all just going to yes. start crying. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I I take like extended breaks largely because social media is like a huge distraction for me. Okay. Um, and it also just like often makes me feel bad. Like I'll yeah. just see how great everyone else is doing. And even though I know it's not real, it, it will get into my head and then I'll spend – time on Instagram instead of like working on something I'm being paid to work on right. so totally. I'll take Instagram off my phone um, I also use an app on my computer called self control where you can block sites for uh, <laughs> your faces for a I'm certain like, amount of time <laughs> writing this See, say like I'm gonna block Instagram Twitter Facebook whatever for or YouTube for three hours so I can work on the script or something and then at the end and you can't and like it won't you can restart your computer and it will not let you go to those sites holy shit because I put one of those like timers on my social apps on my phone yeah only a certain amount of day and I've literally hit ignore every single day and just keep going just keep going it won't let you do it and I remember I was working the other day and I and my friend sent me a tweet and I tried to open it and it kept saying error and I was like this is so weird why isn't it working and then I remembered (gasps) that I had put on uh, self-control so I still use like Instagram stories sometimes and and I every once in a while I get a brand deal so I'm that's like the main reason I haven't quit Right. All together, yeah. It, it pays a bill sometimes. Yeah. Um. But I'm less active. Like I don't post about my personal life that much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. I might post like you know I'm writing in my journal or I'm I like this dress or whatever. But I'm not posting minute by minute updates about what I'm doing like I used totally. to. Hey, Graham um, fam. Hey, Graham fam. Hey, yeah, Graham I don't. Fam. I, I, loved I don't. It. I loved it. I don't do it anymore. It it just, for me, again, this is like the thing that I'm kind of grappling with right now is, and I'm sure both of you understand this, a different scale because like your followings are huge compared to mine. But like once you open the door, you can't close it. And so especially going through my divorce, people were like asking me like super invasive questions. And I was like, y'all, I don't know you. And then I realized, oh, you think that we have this relationship because Mm -hmm. I've told you a lot and you know now feel a sense of entitlement to know Mm -hmm. more and you know like grace you like i was when i when we like met and i realized like you had had a boyfriend i was like you have a boyfriend like no one knows this about you and you (laughs) were like oh yeah i don't fucking put that on the internet and i was like holy shit like there's a different way to live and be i was like that was like but Mind hey, blowing. I know. And that's like how I started. But then you get like we were just talking about mm-hmm. this in another episode. You get intoxicated by Ooh, and you feedback. get like the sirens call like lured into like people. And, you know, you get drilled into your head. Transparency, authenticity. Yeah. And there is that to a degree. But you can also which I think you and I are really similar on now of like learning that boundaries are also yes. wonderfully authentic and transparent oh, for yes. an audience to realize and it's uh it's taken a lot of time and I'm still like you struggling with like figuring out what works best for me mm-hmm. but yeah it is one of those things where it is such a because like I'll find myself wasting time looking at the lives of people I don't no. know I didn't I know 10 even, minutes ago I shit about. <laughs> and let me add to that the lives of people that I don't even fucking like I don't yes. like you <laughs> I yes. don't like you and I know so much about your life and I'm just like yes. gimme 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 and I'm just like <laughs> right like, like going down the rabbit hole of who you're friends with and uh-huh. who you hung out with and I'm like I have wasted so much time and uh, I could be living my own life 100%. so I have to cut myself off from it yeah um, but that's I, good to hard. know that like no I will look at this self-control app because it's I great. keep I keep telling myself that I have self-control which is not true (laughs) every day and so I have to actually like 
get other systems in place for myself to help me with this. Uh, Cause yeah, yeah, it's just like, especially in pandemic, like you don't, you realize like you look up and it's been three hours that I'm just refreshing the explore page on Instagram just right? to see what's going on, thinking that it's what I need to be in the know about. And to, like, the, make the content. explore page thinks I am just <laughs> really into before and after yeah. plastic <laughs> surgery and shit that's i'm like instagram yeah that's just instagram they think all of us care about that stuff totally yeah, it's, i'm like what what have you seen in my pictures that you think i need <laughs> a lot of rhinoplasty <laughs> before and after I, mean, <laughs> I highly recommend just like taking a break i like i right. whenever i book a good job or like i have a big project i'll just leave social media for like a month or That's two amazing. months sometimes I won't even say like I'll just take yeah. it off my phone and I'm just gone and it's like if we're actually friends and you care about me, you right. have my phone number. You'll yeah. text me. And, no, that's and ask incredible. What I'm up to. <laughs> so many people are like, I have an announcement to make. I'm taking no. a break. And then you're like, you were gone 48 hours. No, you don't <laughs> yeah. have to make an announcement. Like, and it, it was really, um, perspective shifting for me to come to the realization that like if something life-changing happens I'll find out about it like yeah. I'm not gonna mm -hmm. find out about you know the alien invasion from Instagram yeah. like I will look <laughs> out my window and I will see that the aliens are like beaming motherfuckers up like yes. it's fine that I did it you know I won't <laughs> see the memes but like right. I'll know it's happening my mother will call me and yeah. be like <laughs> shit's going down <laughs> you know that's so healthy i know that's such that a is, healthy relationship. it's taken a long time for me to okay. get here <laughs> but oh God. it must be nice to to be able to take it like full circle now that you're working on iCarly like you said to be able to take all the things yeah. that you've learned literally from being <laughs> online and infuse them in a show that's getting yeah. rebooted it's so oh, cool oh yeah it's really really cool it felt really like a serendipitous moment for me um yeah. and i'm i really feel like our room is comprised of people with such great um, varied skills and backgrounds and so you know we can have a conversation about the algorithm and I'm the person in the room that's like here's what an algorithm actually is <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> here's what it isn't like mm -hmm. you know here are things that I was grappling with when I was a, a YouTube personality or whatever yeah. um, mm -hmm. and so that's really nice and it's helped me kind of come to terms with like I don't know again it's so refreshing to be able to talk to people who are in the industry because I'm sure you guys know when you talk to people who aren't it just feels like you're talking a different language yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, don't get it but I've had like my own moments where I'm like oh I wish I was doing more I wish I was better I don't want to be just an internet person I, I have all these other skills I feel like I've been put in a box like I'm not just this one thing and um, this job and and a lot of other things I've worked on have really given me the perspective of like oh that part of my career is not something to be embarrassed of. Mm -hmm. It's really, it made me who I am. It got me to where I am. Yeah. Um, it's given me a unique perspective that I wouldn't have had if I hadn't done it. Um, versus like, I'm not an internet person. Like I'm, I'm more, yes. Yes. No, I'm, I'm all of those things. Yeah. <laughs> A hundred percent. That is absolutely correct. You don't have to hide it. And it's it, exactly. It's a part of your journey yeah. that got you to the place of being able to do all these other cool things. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're inspiring. Oh. This is so, I know we have to wrap up our episode, but I feel like we could talk Ooh. for 12 more hours. I do want to ask you yes. something real okay. quick. This will, this will be silly. I just thought of it yeah. because okay. you have a dog uh, who's cute as hell flex yes. that that underbite um, yes. melts me i love him uh, but you also are a little cutie and that you like play ukulele and shit <laughs> so i want to know from personal experience do you have specific made-up songs you sing to your dog and if so can we have one to close out this episode i i do <laughs> i do have one um okay if you know okay <laughs> see if you know the tune that this is okay, okay. Flexy boy with an underbite and an appetite. I wouldn't trade you for any other puppy. It's Beyonce's brown skin girl. <laughs> and I sing it about my dog. He literally looked up from the couch like you're singing my song. My, my theme. He's like, should I walk in? Do they want me on camera? <laughs> he just starts Flexy dancing. Boy. <laughs> I know this is supposed uh, to be about like black women empowerment, but now it's about my fucking dog. So, <laughs> so you know good. what? The original song was for me and this one is for him. Yes. And oh. I'm okay with that. Oh, that's, that's so wonderful. Uh, to me, 
This is perfect. Yes. I love is. that you could ask me that question and you knew I had the I answer it. for it. Yeah, I knew it. No, because Mamrie's got an entire like EP she's working on for beans. I mean, <laughs> I, I leave the house and I go, you're the love of my life. You're my five, my tiny five pound wife. You're the girl of my dreams. You're my little biscuit beans. Bye beans. I'll be back in two hours. <laughs> like, it's a full vaudeville show. I knew you'd have it. I do it all the time. It makes me so happy. Oh, good. Well, you make us so happy. Yes. Oh, thank you guys so much for having having me I was so I was so flattered when you reached out and said oh, that you wanted me to be on the pod so we're thank you. so fucking excited about everything that you do it's so cool to just like watch all like I will never ex- like it's always unexpected it's mm-hmm. always so cool it's always like well deserved and so it's so nice to like catch up and also just like shoot the shit about all the shit that surrounds our like internet experience <laughs> so strange I know well I look forward to a day in the near future where we can do it in person yes. without yes, masks we can like break that six foot barrier yes. it's gonna be so wonderful and we uh. will have earned it well when you actually have time to come up for air yeah Hit us! Up. I know it's yeah. ridiculous. I live literally. I live walking distance from she, you. She like uh, she is across the street from my grocery I store. I live oh, so shit. close. We're within to a you. mile. So close to you. Yeah. I love so it. Well, we will we will sidebar off Please. the pod and we will make it happen. Um, I love it. Where can people find anything that you're doing online, or where do you, you want, want people them to, find. to find you? <laughs> <laughs> Please do not hack into my iCloud. Um, <laughs> she's yeah, got some uh, nudes though. She's got some <laughs> tasteful nudes up in there. <laughs> Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> Manifesting that. Um, yeah. You know, I'm on all social media as Cheska Lee, C H E S C A L E I G H. And then other than that, I'll just say get Paramount Plus and yes. watch yes. iCarly this summer. It's going to be really funny. And nice. I think everyone's going to enjoy it. Awesome. Ah, love all it. Right. We love you, Fran. Thank you, Francesca. Thank you. Bye, friends. <laughs> Wow, I mean, I have to start doing more. And the first thing I need to do is meet her underbite flex little monster flex but Ugh. talking about him reminded me i am out of dog food for beans and i cannot go home empty-handed so i'm gonna order some dog dude dog 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 you might be able to you guys gotta look it up for yourselves <laughs> thanks for watching this episode we'll see you next time on how, how you, you been, been?